I've seen some arguments that this might be a risk in a certain way because um, it, you know, now that you've taken, you've struck such a blow to uh, China's semiconductor industry, they might be less inclined to do something like wait longer to take over Taiwan because, like, some people have the analysis of some people was that they would wait until they were able to manufacture their own semiconductors. But isn't it better if the PLA tries to take Taiwan before the PLA is ready to do that? That's a good argument. Yeah. Well, maybe. It, well, in terms of would it be better than not taking Taiwan? No. Is it better than them taking it later when they're definitely going to succeed? Then yeah. Right. Like China, China is actively building up their navy and their the rocket force and and everything to prepare for this invasion and you know the us and taiwan are like really not necessarily prepared and it's also unclear how much more prepared the us and taiwan are going to get but we know the trajectory it's very clear of the pla so you know you've got the pla like absolutely on the getting ready to take over trajectory. And the US and Taiwan are kind of like on the maybe preparation side, right? So it is better, I think, to 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 be able to deal with it early. Well, I mean, it would be better for to kind of put them in the position where they won't do it. Oh, that's far better. Yeah. Yeah, and and maybe, you know, if uh striking this blow and then doing some of the other things with Taiwan, which we should have been doing years ago with, you know, joint military exercises and, you know, getting a, a, a naval base in Taiwan and that sort of thing. And uh, that would be, you know, to do that now while the PLA is really still not ready to, to, to take action against it is a, is a better way to prevent the, the attempt in the first place. I think that, uh, you know, with the the chip thing also, it's the calculation that the U.S. might have like maximum leverage right now. Yeah. Because if the U.S. Uh, has like so much influence over the technology being used at this moment, for them to restrict that now makes a lot more sense than waiting right. until maybe China's already started to grow some of their own right. homegrown tech or and other countries have taken over more right. of the market. And that's that's going to be the fallout from this, which is that the CCP will realize that they have to home grow their entire microchip supply chain. And that's going to take a long time and they'll have to steal more technology and it's going to be hard to do. Uh, but they will make a big push for that as they've been making a big push to have homegrown, you know, A, B, C, D, like all different things. Well, right. And and like when, when the U.S. put sanctions on Russia, you saw like, you know, China and Russia trying to, banks trying to use like an alternate system to move money around. And so that just means that these authoritarian regimes, especially China, are going to eventually develop a, their own system. I mean, the CCP already started trying to grow their own semiconductor industry a couple of years ago. Like in the latest five-year economic plan, Xi Jinping directly addresses the need to grow the Chinese semiconductor industry and lessen the reliance on foreign companies while also still keeping other co countries reliant on China economically. Like right. it is explicitly in there. So they already saw like that this was going to be a problem and they needed to be able to um, do their own kind of like high tech manufacturing like semiconductors. So that ship already sailed. Uh, so the U.S. is kind of blocking them now from really being able to get further ahead with um, U.S. technology. Yeah, because I think Chris Miller made a good point that this is not semiconductors is not something you can just throw money at and get functioning semiconductors. Like there's a lot of know-how at all stages of the plan, not just like the, the the factories themselves, but all the individual components that make semiconductors. So by stopping by by doing this now, that really throws a huge roadblock in the Communist Party's goals. Someone it's not had like 
just like in a couple of years, like with they focus, they'll with put a lot of money into it. They'll be equal to the United States or other countries. Somebody actually said that this is basically forcing China to reinvent the wheel mm. at every stage of the of their semiconductor development. So yeah, I guess we'll see. The there was a article a few years ago about after China had announced that they were going to make the semiconductor push, and these uh, local and, and provincial governments had thrown a lot of money at different companies that said they could do this. Uh, there was an analysis that showed that a lot of that money was completely wasted because it went toward companies who like just didn't have the technological capabilities. Like they overpromised a lot of stuff and wasn't weren't able to deliver. So like a lot of them went bankrupt or failed in other ways. So they threw a lot of money at it and got very little back. And and this is the thing, like, you know, the Chinese Communist Party has used cheap Chinese knockoffs as a way to uh, compete in a lot of areas, but there are some things that you just can't really knock off easily. And like the, the these these really high tech things are, are a, a place where the U.S. does have a lot of power, which you know the you know the Trump administration now the Biden administration has is effectively using. But I mean, th it is this does ultimately tie back to. Uh, Taiwan, which, you know, makes makes most of the world's like, you know, really advanced semiconductors. Um, and like if the Chinese Communist Party tries to invade Taiwan, I mean, that's just going to completely blow up the supply chain of these critical resources. So, I mean, th there's just th there's got to be some way to resolve that conflict.